uh, welcome uh, this uh, evening presentation where we are uh, looking at the Jewish wedding model. And this is uh, part two in the series. And uh, in this part two, we are going to deal with uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the total time or the time that uh, uh, someone is uh, the throat and uh, they have to wait uh, for marriage. And so uh, I'd like us to pray and then uh, we shall be able to enter into the session fully. I want us to pray, then uh, we'll be able to enter into the session fully. Shall we uh, pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, we glorify your name for the good things that you do for us. Lord, the uh, session that we are going to have, let it be of a blessing unto our souls, and uh, it may help us to know how to handle our marriage. And Lord, that uh, we may be a light unto others who are seeking the same light in Jesus' name. Amen. And so yesterday we started uh, looking at um, the Jewish wedding model, and um, we saw that the Jewish wedding had uh, three stages and just for the people maybe who were not there, I'd like us to look at this once again. That um, we had three actually uh, stages in a Jewish wedding model. The first stage, which is called the Shiduhen, uh, it is like the courtship stage where actually you find a match and uh, Part of the finding the match was done by the parents of uh, the man. Uh, the parents were involved fully in um, finding a match for uh, their, their son. And they, have, they had a hand in uh, who will be uh, married to the family because um, marriage per se was bringing two families together. It was not just a matter of, of two individuals coming together, but um, it was a matter of two families coming together so that uh, they may help each other uh, in spiritual matters, in social matters, and uh, they may form a bond that will help them not only on the life on this earth, but also in the life to come that is uh, uh, making sure that each party was able to go to heaven. And uh, uh, so marriage was a contract between two families and not two individuals. And the father of the man who was marrying was fully involved in finding a match for his son. The other family on the otherwise, they were like losing a daughter, but not per se losing her. Um, uh, they had this opportunity of integrating their daughter into a new home. And the parents of the man became the parents of this young lady who was being married. And so the first step in the marriage was the Shuduhin, finding a match and setting out the terms of the covenant. That is what we call in our modern times the courtship um, period. And then we had the second part, which was called the Erusin, where the bride and the groom undergo the mikveh, or the mikvah, as you may uh, call it. This is the time, or this is the part of the engagement. And uh, on that part of um, the engagement, uh, which is called the Erusin, there was the mikvah, or the mikvah, which is the purification or the cleansing or um, uh, what we shall call the, we, we find that it's the giving of, of the gifts. On that engagement, during the Erusin, when you go to engage the lady at her home, then you will pay the matan, which was uh, the gifts, and also you could pay part of the dowry or full dowry. And then uh, you sign what we call the ketuba or uh, 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 some certificates or documents 
uh, that will bind you down. At this point of engagement, you are a husband and a wife, but not living together. Just as uh, Joseph and uh, Mary were husband and wife, but not living together, that they had gone through the Erosin where actually you go for engagement. That is what we call engagement. And it was not a simple thing to come out of engagement and just leave a lady or just leave a man the way things happen in this time. That is not the case because we find that the Jewish uh, wedding model represented the plan of redemption. And so we saw that Christ, who came from another family, that is heaven, uh, found a match on earth, which is the human family. And then uh, uh, the father uh, uh, was involved in uh, finding the match for his son and said, okay, you will go and you redeem them. They will be uh, uh, your bride and then you will be the bridegroom. And the father approved of it. And then the son came for an engagement and paid um, the, the, the dowry, which is the shedding of his blood at Calvary. And he entered into engagement with the church and then, uh, apart from paying the dowry, actually, he paid the matan, which are the gifts, and that is the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that uh, at the time of waiting uh, for Jesus Christ, this is the time of betrothal between Calvary and the second coming of Jesus Christ, that uh, the gifts will help the bride to be able to be in touch with Jesus Christ and always to remember Jesus Christ so that the, the, the bride may live a life that is um, pleasing to the, uh, to the bridegroom. And so you find that uh, the dowry was paid with the man and also the matan, which are the gifts. And um, these gifts were to enable the, 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 the bride be able to dwell in their house without uh, looking for any other ones outside from any other man or from any other livelihood. She lived comfortably. And this time was a period of 12 months before the bridegroom could come to take. And so they signed a certificate, which uh, actually was like just a marriage, so that when you come out of engagement, if you decided that you are not pleased in this person, then you will have to write a certificate of divorce during the engagement if you find that you are not pleased with this lady. And then they had a covenantal meal and cup of wine. Uh, you understand that prior to Jesus Christ dying on the cross, he gave the disciples the, 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 the wine and told them, drink of this, I shall never drink of it until in the kingdom. And so also in the signing of the ketubah, when you went for engagement, there was a meal which was prepared, a meal of bonding that will always remind the people. This is the things that um, we were looking at yesterday. And then the third stage was the nisuin. After 12 months, then uh, the, the bride will go and pick um, the, the, the bridegroom will go and pick the bride so as they may live together. This is the coming, the groom coming to take his bride home announced by his two witnesses. Then the finalization of the vows and the cup of wine, where actually when Christ comes the second time, he says that that is when he will drink of the, uh, of the wine, uh, of the vine again. And then uh, uh, we find that that is when, the, after the 12 months, then the bridegroom came and took um, the bride and went with, uh, with him. This showed the period that Christ will spend between uh, resurrection and the second coming this is called the betrothal the, the betrothal time or the betrothal time where actually this the tarring time in this tarring time um, uh, um the the lady had to learn about um uh, how to be a wife the things that she should know what is pleasing to the husband how she should address the husband and uh, how he have to behave, how she has to behave in the new home. It was a time of learning. This betrothal time, it was a time of learning. This time of engagement, and they could exchange letters via the best couple or the the two witnesses, that the side of the man and the side of the lady. And so they they sometimes they could throw in the parties and uh, be able sometimes to uh, um, uh, see each other not directly but indirectly. And so that is um, the kind of information we had in the uh, in, in the beginning yesterday. And so uh, I think that uh, the Lord will bless us as we go through this. And uh, so we saw that um, 
um, some of the examples in uh, uh, in the Old Testament where we had the Shiduhin and then uh, the Erusin and then the the, the uh, Nusin is where Abraham uh, actually uh, sends Eliezer to go and find um, a suitable match for Isaac, and then uh, actually uh, Isaac uh, uh, Eliezer goes and finds a wife for Rebecca, and then there is the dowry, and then uh, there is the what we call um, the matan, which are the gifts Eliezer was able to be uh, to give there, and then you would ask. Where is the betrothal time or the 12 months where actually uh, Isaac had to wait for Rebecca? I want just to say this in passing that uh, Isaac was marrying from a family where actually people knew each other and they were relatives. And so there was not that much time of waiting, but there is uh, some time between uh, uh, Eliezer negotiating and being accepted to take uh, Rebecca in the time that they come to Isaac so that he may be able to marry Rebecca. And then there is that covenantal meal that was uh, a given. Um, and you remember Eliezer saying that I'll not eat of anything until uh, this matter is accomplished. And that is uh, the where they took a covenantal meal. And then when they came to Isaac, not much is revealed, but according to the Jewish wedding model, this um, there is um, the place where actually they had to meet together. They had uh, uh, um, to uh, uh, finalize the marriage vows, and then they they had to uh, be able to sign up the final certificate of dowry or something of such, and then they enter into the time of the honeymoon. And so after the the the, the wedding. Uh, actually, they would go to a honeymoon, and that is where we are told in the book of Numbers and Exodus that when you marry, you shall not go to the war, but you shall have time at home with the, your wife, lest you die and somebody take off her when she is still uh, young in marriage. So they were not allowed to go to war after marriage. They were to stay at home. And you understand that when Christ comes the second time to take the bride, we are going to heaven for a thousand years of peace and we shall not be at war with anything sin shall be eradicated and then after a thousand years satan comes again and we have to engage in the war but the father protects us and cleanses the whole earth so in this honeymoon it is the father who protected his son and uh, the daughter-in-law and if anything came to befall them the father could be able to defend them and so the father will defend us after the millennium from satan attacking the city then after that, uh, they could spend time after this um, time, uh, they could spend some time in the father's house after the wedding or the marriage. Uh, and so we shall spend time in heaven. And then they go to their place and then they start their family. So after spending a thousand years in heaven, we shall come on earth and then Christ will be with his uh, bride, uh, the bride for forevermore. That is the kind of the, the preliminary stages of the Jewish wedding model. And so I want to fully enter today into this time of waiting, the 12 months of after signing the ketubah or the engagement certificate. And then you have to wait for 12 months. The, the lady lives at her own house after dowry has been paid and the gift that is the matan. And then she has to wait for 12 months before the man comes and picks her. That is the period that um, this is the water we are going to uh, enter into today fully. So this uh, uh, tarring time, the betrothal time, the 12 months, what was happening when the man was at his uh, uh, home and the lady was at her home? Uh, I'd like to refer you to the book of uh, John chapter 14. Now, I said something in the first presentation and I'll repeat it. Marriage is uh, a miniature of the redemption plan. The reason why we are not um, understanding the scripture per se and not uh, getting the value of the plan of redemption and understanding the deep things that uh, uh, pertains to the uh, to to the marriage is because we have 
uh, uh, neglected or we are in ignorance in understanding the marriage. But marriage had to reveal uh, the relationship that Jesus Christ has with the church. So a man and a wife, actually the way they live, I said in the first presentation, the way they live in their family will show if actually uh, uh, they understand the plan of salvation and they are um, uh, what I may say, Christians mature enough to be uh, translated into heaven. The way you just live with your wife, the way the wife lives with the husband and the husband lives with the wife really shows if they understand the plan of redemption and salvific matters. And um, if Christ will come into our marriages today, we will not qualify to be part of those who are translated because uh, we don't understand the marriage and that is why we don't understand the redemption plan. So this betrothal time, this 12 months of waiting, that is the time between Calvary and the second coming, the time between the man signing the engagement ring, uh, the engagement certificate, and then uh, uh, going back home as Christ went back in heaven and then coming for the lady. Um, in uh, what, what is happening between this time? And I'll be more spiritual about it because marriage is more spiritual than we may think of it. So when Christ had paid the engagement, uh, 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 um, the engagement price and then signed the certificate with his own blood, he went back to heaven. And when man signs the engagement certificate, he goes back home and uh, he goes to prepare a place where this lady will be able to come and uh, be able to be comfortable as even she were comfortable at her home. She has to find an environment which, which is an environment humble enough to uh, uh, continue in her spiritual journey and growing and experience the love of the husband. And uh, we understand that uh, the father prepared a place for Adam and Eve before he gave Eve to Adam so that Eve may not come and then finds that Adam was in a hopeless situation. And so also this man has to go back home and know that now I am a husband, even though the wife is not here, I'm a husband and somebody is part of this family and I must be preparing a place if it is start a business, in this 12 months, see how it goes, try out some few things and see which one will work out, even prepare something for the lady so that when she comes, she is not just idle and going to village, talking with the women village and storytelling without engaging herself in something which is beneficial to herself and to the family to alleviate the necessities of the family. Sometimes people are married and they are only consumers. Now, I say that in a gentle way. They are only consumers. There's nothing they provide for the family. It is not per se the problem of the lady. If she comes and there's nothing she can offer to the family, it is because the man himself, during this betrothal time, he did not prepare himself well to host this lady and make her be reproductive in the family. You understand one thing that marriage, when um, Adam and Eve were put together, God told them, go and be fruitful. It is not just fruitfulness of bringing children on this world, but being fruitful in every aspect and every sphere. And so the man has to prepare uh, the condition that will make this lady be reproductive or fruitful when she comes in this marriage so that um, it may not be that you are quarreling every time and uh, it, it, it becomes a burden that uh, you have a wife, you have to feed her, you have to take care of her parents in some way, and uh, you have to take care of some necessities in, in the family, but you cannot afford them. The reason is that the way you spend your betrothal time was not a proper time. And so Christ, to avoid such a thing, when he had engaged the church and paid the bride price, which is the blood, and then paid the matan, which are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he went back to the Father. And uh, why is he there? John chapter 14. 
Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And so uh, Christ, after this engagement with the church, when to prepare a place. When a man has given the bride price and has given the matan, which are the gifts, he has to go back home and prepare. If it is building a house, let him build a house. If it is starting a business, let him start a business so that this lady may come to a place which is um, actually uh, prepared. I think I have dwelt on that. And so uh, in this uh, uh, time also there were some things which were wanted of the lady. As a man was um, there to prepare a place and uh, he could send some messages through a witness or the best couple to see how the lady was doing, whatever needs that this lady had and uh, maybe the family so that uh, he may know the welfare of the wife to be or the wife that is at home betrothed to himself. And um, uh, this illustration is uh, picked very well in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 16. If you go to Ezekiel chapter 16, and uh, maybe may, many people may not agree with the language that is there, but um, uh, I'd like just to highlight some few things there in uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, about this starting time. Ezekiel 16. Um, this is what we find in the Holy Word of God. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say that, said the Lord of unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan, thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these things unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee and saw the polluted, uh, they polluted in thy own blood. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live ye. Yeah. I said unto thee, when thou was in the blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the bird of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art two excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thine time was the time of love, and I Spread thy skirt, my skirt over thee, and cover thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, said the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Now look at verse 9. Then washed I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and showed thee with burgess skin, and I guarded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain uh, on thy neck. And I put jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen, and silk, and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour, and honey, and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So uh, leave the negativity that uh, you may have a problem with in Ezekiel chapter 16. Christ is speaking of here his people whom he has betrothed. And he's saying that I met you and I saw you, and then I decked you with all these things and you became mine. That is when you pay the dowry and you pay the gift. And this lady starts living a sumptuous life because of what you have done as a man. And so she is yours and you are taking care of her with all the bad things she may ever have, which maybe you know and some things you do not know, you will know as the engagement continues. In this period, you are really coaching her to be a wife, to live with you without uh, 
uh, any problems in your marriage. And this is what Christ did for us. He found us. We were sinners. He paid the bride price. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now we are enjoying the benefits of our husband, who is Jesus Christ. And now we are living a good life because of what Christ has done for us. We as a wife or the bride and Jesus Christ as the bridegroom. So the man has to make sure that uh, this wife he has betrothed, that she is living according to uh, how he would want her to be. If there are some other things that she has not excelled in, the man does not have during this engagement to divorce this lady, but he has to do everything he can so that this lady may be ready for marriage. And so on the part of Christ, he gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He makes sure that we have the right character to dwell with him in the presence of the Holy Father without sin. And on the part of man in this uh, real marriage, actually, the man has best couples. They are looking to this lady's what she likes, what she doesn't like, her behaviors, how she sees life and all these things. And they are reporting back to the man. And then if there are things that the man do not like, he also send emissaries or he sends the witnesses to be able to commune with this lady. I wish these things could be done like this. If we get married, I like these things to be done like this. This is the time of betrothal. This is the time of engagement, the time between the you have paid the bride price, you have paid the gift in the time of going to take um, the, the bride um, uh, the, to, to your house. And so Ezekiel chapter 16 brings out that picture so well. And uh, uh, the book of uh, John chapter 14 brings out that picture well. And also the lady at this time should have to learn something. She is learning the culture of the man that she's going to live with. She knows the likes of those people. She knows the things that they don't like. She knows how they can subsist, kind of businesses that can be run in this place and prosper. And if she haven't trained in these things, she can take these 12 months to be able to train up these things so that when she comes, then she is like the woman in Proverbs chapter 31. She is ready for life. She is ready to sit and settle in her new family and be able to reproduce. And then uh, after Jesus Christ doing all these things in the book of Ezekiel chapter 16, after the man doing all these things that we are talking about, preparing the lady for the marriage, now we have uh, the book of um, Isaiah chapter 61, Isaiah chapter 61, I, I can assure you that uh, the marriage institution is more spiritual than uh, what we may think of. It is just because we missed these steps that uh, we don't find how the marriage institution is so solemn when entering upon it. The book of uh, Isaiah chapter 61 verses 10 and verses 11, now the wife is responding to the husband-to-be. The wife is responding to the husband to be. This is what we read. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. And so now the lady also has seen what the man has done. And on her part, she really maintains the garment unspotted. She doesn't interact with other men to sway her from the husband-to-be. She doesn't involve herself in something that will injure her and mar her beauty. So actually, she is doing everything that a married woman would be doing, albeit she is not living with the husband. The way she walks now in her village is so different than when she walked when she was single. She is engaged. She is a married woman, although she is still living in her place. And so she have to maintain that purity. And uh, um, uh, she has to be pleasing to her husband. She have to inquire about the husband's 
weigh affairs and be able to live a life that will uh, be able to please um, this husband. And so uh, those are the, some of the things that uh, we see that had to happen to uh, during uh, the bet uh, betrothal time where actually the, the lady has to make sure that uh, uh, she's learning something uh, to be able to provide for her family to be, and the man has to be preparing uh, uh, something for uh, this lady that um, is coming to uh, live with her. Without such a preparation, then when people enter into the marriages, that is when you hear that many of the marriages are breaking down or uh, many of the marriages are not working out. And why is this happening? It is because the people did not understand the Jewish wedding model or what it entails to prepare yourself for the marriage. And then uh, they enter into marriage and we have all sorts of problems and uh, you are trying to learn somebody, you have not engaged with this person fully through the best couples. You don't know what she likes. We don't know what she eats. We don't know how she dresses and all this stuff. And so when this woman comes into the marriage, you are trying to rectify things that could have been rectified during the betrothal time. And so this becomes... Uh, uh, a problem per se in the family. But um, looking at um, how Jesus Christ is conducting this wedding, as he is preparing a place, also you find in Revelation chapter 3, uh, verses um, 19 going down, was that behold, I knock at the door, whoever opens, I'll come in and suffer with him. And so uh, uh, there is this part of uh, the lady are uh, also sacrificing uh, uh, what may have been her self so that she may fit in in the new family. The things that uh, she sees that uh, they will not make um, her happy or the husband happy, these are the things that have to be uh, uh, sacrificed. Self have to die on the part of the lady to submit, uh, to be submitted to the husband. And the husband has to stand in the place of Christ that he will not lord over the wife um, or the lady with the things which will not help her. More so, when you understand that the marriage is uh, a spiritual institution more than just a social, uh, intimate uh, institution. And so, during this time of betrothal, Christ is telling the church in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, to whom who overcomes, I shall give to it from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise, which means that if this lady really uh, passes through this time and is fit for the marriage to this man, there are some things she has to overcome, um, some of the things of her lifestyle and singlehood that she used maybe to enjoy and think that they were good, but yet they are not fit for the marriage she has to overcome them and so prepare to live in this new estate and uh, share in the empire that this man has made. And uh, in Revelation 2.11, we are to also told, he who overcomes shall by no means be harmed by the second death. And um, uh, I can just um, try to fit this with the, the many divorces that are, are happening, which are like the second death. Uh, uh, if you are prepared well, then there's no need of coming into marriages. And then we have these separations that we are seeing and uh, these divorces that are so prevalent in the times that we are living in. And so while Christ, while the bride is waiting for the bridegroom to come and take her to their home, while this man is preparing to take the lady to her home, there is the issue of each one of you overcoming your temperaments, each of you overcoming self, knowing and uh, that uh, you are being joined with somebody and you have to be of one mind, you have to be one uh, flesh. And so um, you will see a lot of promises that uh, Christ gives the church if they overcome. And if this lady can make up a good wife, then this home shall be like the home where Christ will take the church when uh, they are uh, 
married at last. And so we should be striving in uh, our engagements. We should be striving in this betrothal time. Uh, those who are entering into marriage and those uh, who are waiting to get married, just as the church is waiting to be married to Christ to consummate the marriage, also we should be preparing uh, ourselves. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, soon and very soon, Christ is uh, coming to uh, take uh, his church home. Also in this uh, 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 time we find in the book of Matthew chapter 25, which um, we shall um, uh, uh, read uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25. We shall be looking into this as just a topic of its own, the book of Matthew chapter 25, the parable of uh, the virgins. This is what we read. It's a common parable. Uh, in the in the in the book of Matthew chapter twenty five in the book of um, Matthew chapter twenty five sorry we read that then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps uh, and so I was saying thank you so much for reminding me that about the voice uh, or the volume there are some extra precautions that uh, the wife to be or the lady to be the wife should take that if this happens in marriage how can i deal with it if my expectations um are not met or uh, if in this uh, my husband will expect this th there's some extra precaution you should take if um, uh, things may not be as uh, you may think that they should be and so you see that an extra oil is being taken by these virgins as the time of tarring still is there. And so while the lady also is waiting to be taken to her home, she should take the extra courses if there be uh, and uh, extra precautions and know how to deal with various things in the marriage um, line. And so uh, that is the part of uh, the preparation. And so, uh, after that, then uh, we see that uh, the wedding will take place, the bridegroom will come, and then uh, be able to um, uh, be able to, to be married to this man. And so I think that uh, um, we, we miss a lot when uh, we don't uh, get into deep study about uh, how the Jewish wedding model was conducted, uh, we, we miss a lot uh, in these uh, things. And uh, th there's a lot to be revealed. There's the thematic uh, 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 views on the, the thematic connections of this Jewish wedding model and the redemption plan. And uh, Christ will want us to study these things so that, uh, you know, uh, the spirit of prophecy says that move, um, uh, do not move so hast uh, quick. Uh, make the haste slowly. That is, I think, the word that I use because um, th there are things that Christ will want you to avoid in your marriage. Because once you are married, uh, once you are ma <laughs> once you are married, there is no like um, thinking of coming out again. Because I don't think that uh, 
I believe, I don't think that is the Bible. The Bible says that uh, in Nahum 119 shall not rise in uh, uh, another time. Uh, what you have thought about the Lord, sin shall not rise anymore again. And so these are the people who have come together. These are ties that binds. And uh, you are not expecting you to be married and then come out of marriage. Just like when Christ comes and takes his child, there's no separating uh, forevermore. And uh, this is how uh, actually Christ wanted the marriage relation to be. And uh, uh, alas, what has happened in these days that uh, we have missed these thematic connections between the marriage institution and uh, the redemption plan. Otherwise, uh, as I come to an end, the Lord um, is still uh, in the business of saving us. And as he is still in the business of saving us, he has put us in families that we may understand these things and be able to understand the salvific part of it uh, more impo importantly. And so <clears throat> we let us take our time because uh, in, in the book of Malachi chapter two, the book of Malachi chapter two, I'd like us to look at this as we come to an end. And uh, I touched on this in the first presentation, but uh, I feel it is good that uh, uh, um, we touch it once again. Once the marriage is consummated, in uh, Malachi chapter two, he says, verse 13, and this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering anymore or receiveth it with goodwill at your hand. Now, this is a very serious thing that um, a marriage relationship that is not working actually the Lord cannot accept the offering therein. It's like flooding the altar of God with tears. And so he says that I'll not accept, I'll not receive the offering at your hand because it is actually covering the altar with tears. In which way? Yet he say, wherefore? About verse 13, they are asking, how have we covered the altar of the Lord with tears? Why are you not going to receive the offering at our, our hand? He says, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of the youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet it is she, thy companion, and the wife of thy covenant. And so these marriages where men feels marriages with violence, God says that he doesn't accept offerings at their hand because it is dealing treacherously with the wife of thy covenant. And uh, uh, he says, and he did, and did he not make one? So when he makes them one, he says that yet had he the residue of the spirit that is the remnant of the spirit, and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away for one covered violent with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. Now, let us just try to unpack this that um, as you are brought together, Adam and Eve, uh, God took the rib out of Adam and made Eve. God is not doing that in the consummation of marriage. He doesn't take another rib and creates a wife for you. But what he does, he takes the residue of the spirit, the remnant of the spirit, in that as you live together, the spirit of the man is imparted on the wife and the spirit of the wife is imparted on the husband and for what reason that he might seek a godly seed 
So when your spirit is in unison, what you will reproduce is a godly seed. This marriage thing is not a, a, a job to just jump around with because the reason why God put there a marriage institution and told them to reproduce and multiply and replenish the earth is this. Satan had fallen from heaven and he came with the angels. And it was the godly seed that Adam and Eve will bring to the world that will go and occupy the places left vacant by the holy angels. And so when he brings Adam and Eve together, he is making them from one fabric. When Adam sees Eve, he says, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. And then they lived there after happily. And they were to make a holy seed to fill the vacancy that was left in heaven. And so in these days, God does not take the rib, but he takes the residue of the spirit where actually the character of the man is imparted on the woman or the woman spirit is imparted on the man. As they live together, they adapt to each other. And so they, they learn the lesson that has to do with the plan of redemption as a marriage institution they are learning the lesson of the plan of redemption and their main aim is to reproduce a holy seed as we are being told here in malachi chapter 2 verses 15 that he might seek a godly seed and so he tells the man therefore take heed to your spirit you man and let none deal treacherously against the wife of the youth because the man is implanting the seed in a woman and the woman has to reproduce something. So if the man is implanting an unholy seed, a character is, which is tainted, a character which is filthy, what the woman will reproduce is filthiness and uh, he will reproduce unholy seed, children which are unruly. And those children will be not be able to fulfill the original plan of God to feel the vacancy that was left by the fallen angels. And so when we come into the marriage, it is a solemn thing we are entering in because we are in the business of reproducing a holy seed to be able to fill the places that were left vacancy by uh, the fallen angels. And so uh, I like us to think about these things. Uh, I like us to uh, uh, pray to the Lord that um, he may help us understand these things more than we ever understood them. And uh, we may move or uh, 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 do haste slowly so that um, uh, we may not enter into something we don't understand. And at the end of the time, uh, we suffer judgment and um, we are counted uh, not uh, fit to be part of uh, those who will uh, really have eternal life. And so I hope uh, with that uh, information, we can be able to understand a little bit that um, during this betrothal time, uh, you are preparing your woman to be the woman in Proverbs chapter 31, uh, um, a woman that when the man will be seen at the gates, he shall be praised because of this woman. And... Uh, when Christ comes to take his church, he shall be crowned a king in the gates because uh, the people have been washed from sin and they are ready. They are clothed with linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. And now uh, Christ can receive a kingdom and a crown because you can't have a kingdom without um, the subjects of the kingdom. You can see that in Daniel chapter 7. For a kingdom to be fully a kingdom, we must have subjects of the kingdom. So while Christ is receiving a dominion and preparing a place, the subjects of those kingdom are being made up. And then Christ will come and receive a crown. And so as um, the man is waiting for this lady, he is preparing on his side to make sure that this lady has a good environment. And all, also this lady is preparing so that she may be a crown to the husband when she comes in that village. And the husband shall be recognized and praised because of this lady in Proverbs chapter 31. 
if uh, the man will play his part and the woman will play his part, then we will have a marriage union that uh, will resemble the marriage between Christ and the church. And at the end of the day, man shall be crowned at the gates because of the wife and Christ will be crowned a king to his kingdom because he has subjects which are ready to occupy that kingdom. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us. May we think, continue learning about these things, um, the process of learning and um, in the process of reading. And I pray that the Lord will also give you a chance to study these things if they are so. And if they are good, may we walk in them. If they are bad, let us discard them. And so may the Lord of heaven bless us. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Abba Father, again, I just say thank you because we are still in this betrothal uh, time that you are preparing us so that we may be able to deal in the mansions above where there's purity, where is uh, uh, the glory of God shining in that city. And I pray that uh, as even we conduct our marriage relations, that Father, we may understand these themes that uh, pertains to the kingdom of heaven that we are playing them here on earth. Thank you so much for accepting us in thy son and may thy will be accomplished in our lives now and forevermore in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.